Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Sparks and I'm here today with a very much requested tutorial video showing people how to install multiple one clicks um, properly into a world, how to uh, specifically install custom terrain modules uh, and how to handle one clicks which are more than one click. They're made out of multiple command blocks uh, and so, some of, some other installation tricks for using Game Mode 4 as efficiently as possible in your world. So this is a blank new world that I've just generated and we're at the spawn chunks which is so we're at 100 200 is our coordinates right now now one of the things you can do to reduce lag a lot for your users or for for yourself is to keep players away from the redstone so if this is our natural world spawn and we want to keep this as our world spawn we're going to put the redstone far away and move the spawn chunks so i tend to go for about 5000 blocks out this could be 10000 or more so you can do t t tp at p and then i'm just going to go 5100 5,000. There we go. So we're now over 5,000. We're 5,000 blocks away from uh, everything. And this way, even though these are the spawn chunks and they'll always be loaded with the redstone running in them, uh, none of the information gets sent to, to the player, to the client. So uh, a lot less lag ensues. So once this world is generated around us here, one of the first things you want to do is you want to do game rule command block output false. Now you can just type C for command block output and press tab and it'll auto complete it for you. Uh, you can also do game rule um, log admin commands. This is especially helpful on servers. If you set this to false, um, a lot less information about the modules gets printed, printed to the console, which is really helpful. So we've got those two game rules set up. Fantastic. Now I'm going to go into game mode three. Um, I think I was actually already in game mode three, but this is the spectator mode. So we can sink down into the ground here and we're going to go and around this area, um, it's very important that these are the spawn chunks as well. So I'm going to do um, set world spawn like that. So these are now the new spawn chunks at uh, 5,000, 5,000. Um, and we're now going to go down here and we're going to look for an area for some cave area, which... Um, hang on, I'll just get some night vision like that so we can see a little better. I failed to... There we go. So we're looking for a fairly lava-free area somewhere near here. This is pretty fairly open. Uh, and we're looking to be going in the positive Z and the positive X. So our area is going to be generated in this space that I'm looking at in front of us. So that lava pool will probably get covered. So we're going to make a room. This is the best way to keep your redstone easy to access and fly around and edit in the future. So we're going to use a fill command to generate this room nice and quickly. So before we generate this fill command, we're going to want to press F3, so we have our coordinate information up here, and you can see there's a um, chunk info section. Now, if you see, if I move sideways, you can see this number is slowly changing till we reach zero. Now, zero is the very corner of this chunk. Let me go a little, just line myself up. Okay, and we can also move forward to change the other number. So we want to make both of these numbers zero. There we go. So we're now in the very corner of a chunk, and this, this will help us with... Um, with quite a few things uh, in, in the future where we just keep things lined up to the chunks basically. So I'm going to use a, a fill command to create this room now that we're going to use for our redstone. Okay, so this is the fill command I'm going to use. Uh, you can see that I'm filling um, from minus one blocks away from me at Y0, um, which is one block out from the chunk edge, um, up to 64 blocks in the other direction at uh, at a height of 21, which is going to create, and we're using this um, zero hollow at the end here to basically create a hollow cube surrounded by barriers, which is a nice way of stopping people from getting in. So when I press enter, the area is too large. Excellent. Let me try a slightly smaller number on the height here. Let's try 19. Nope. We're going to do um, between 0 and 6, so that number is now 6, which will generate this room for us. Uh, this is now hollow and filled with barriers, so if we go into game mode 1, uh, we can see that there's barriers all around the edge of this and on the floor. Um, we're going to replace the floor barriers with something else in a moment. Now this, is, this room is a little bit too short for us, so I'm going to stand in this corner again where I was before, and I'm going to do this fill command again, and I'm going to change this 0 to a 7 and I'm going to change this 6 to a 12. It's made it uh, a little bit taller. Now we still have this, um, we have a bedrock line, uh, sort of, sorry, a barrier line up the middle here. So let's um, just create this floor, make this uh, sea lanterns. Um, so we're going to look at this block here. So we're going to stand right in the corner and look straight down, and we're going to do fill. You can press tab three times, and it'll auto-complete those coordinates for you. Press enter, 
fly to the other end of the room, stand in the corner, look straight down, and press uh, T and then up to um, paste in the last entered command, and then you can press tab, tab, tab to autocomplete that, and then you want to do Minecraft colon um, Sea Lantern. I tend to go for Sea Lantern, it adds light, it stops mobs spawning, and it's um, it helps with some other things. So I just press enter, and this entire floor is now going to be filled with Sea Lanterns, uh, so we can we can use this as our workspace. Now we've still got this um, area up here that needs to be cleared. So we're going to stand in the very corner, look straight up. You can see that uh, we are the wireframe is showing around that barrier block. So we're going to do it again. We're going to go fill, tab, 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 enter, fly to the other end of the room, look straight up, tab, 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 Minecraft Air, and that's going to get rid of all those barriers. Uh, it looks like we've got another barrier layer here okay interesting well i guess we'll just do this again quickly oh my goodness okay so we've got a nice large room the high ceiling is very important uh, for installing these one clicks down here um although you can get around it by doing it up on the surface um so we'll try both methods here so you can see uh, what there is so the next thing to do is to install these one clicks okay so i'm going to quickly go over why we we lined ourselves up with this chunk corner and um, and why we lay barriers uh, or sea lanterns down on the ground. This is um, partially just so that everything's aligned on the edges of chunks, which keeps things nice and neat, and also partly because it means that uh, the custom terrain system will consider this entire area to be pre-scanned. So it won't replace these sea lanterns with uh, cobblestone, and uh, you won't get anything being destroyed or any dungeons being generated in this room. So by making sure that the entire chunk is not bedrock, we protect this from being scanned by the custom train system if you're using it. Uh, okay, so now the thing with the um, one clicks is they're always spawned in the negative Z and the positive X of the thing. So we actually, we used to be in this corner here, but we've gone over to the other side now because we want to start in this corner here and we're going to go, so you're facing negative Z, positive X. So if we give ourselves um, a command block, we can place this down. Um, in the corner of the room here and we can go over to the game mode 4 website and we can go and find a module that we'd like to use so let's let's just quickly uh, install the custom crafter because this is a um, actually you know what let's um, let's use one of the modules we actually plan to use today so let's um, use the let's start with the cooler caves expansion pack which is used for the custom crafting so uh, I'm going to copy the one click from the from the website, paste it into this command block, and you're going to get a redstone block and place it down here. Now something you're going to notice is that the stack of command blocks up here doesn't vanish, and this is because the ceiling is a little bit too low, uh, and there are ways that we can get around this. So you can see that this is installed um, in the positive x, negative z from this command block. We can break these to solve this problem, and this is now ready to go. It's been installed and um, it's all good. So that's that's very easy. You can use um, clone commands to, to move these and you can use teleport, teleport commands to move the armor stands if you need to. So um, look, up, look up clone commands yourself if you want to move them once you've installed them. And you'll notice that uh, from the corner of this module, there is um, more or less two blocks of space. I think this is... Um, slightly offset itself because of the ceiling issue but uh, our next command basically we want to line it up with this one and we want to put it here one block away from the previous one um, now this command block here is going to have the same problem as before where it doesn't quite destroy itself so there's something you can do you can go into game mode 3 fly up to the surface like so keeping in line with that original command block and then place a new command block here so go into game mode 1 Look straight down, um, place your command block here, making sure there's nothing around it, there's lots of space, and then we can paste our next command block in here. So let's go back to the website, uh, we're going to get the next module we want to install, which in this case is going to be the Dangerous Dungeons module. Going to get the one click for it here, paste it in here, and power it. So this time the stack of command blocks on top should vanish, excellent, and this has been installed down below. So you can go down here and you can see that it's been nicely installed here. Now we could have actually moved this command block over one or two more blocks without any sort of uh, any sort of issues. Uh, the most 
space you need between these modules is one block. So this command block here could actually have been right here. But I, I leave a little bit of space just to be safe. Um, I would also recommend using a sign to mark all of these modules as you install them. So later if you come back and you're troubleshooting or you're fixing or you want to add more modules, you know what everything is. So let's try this with the next one then. We're going to go and place our next command block level with this one here. We're going to go straight up. Um, and we're going to place our next command block here. Uh, now notice that I am going up uh, a few blocks to make sure that there's nothing so that this hill doesn't get in the way of it or anything. Uh, we're going to delete this, this old one. I'm going to get the next module, which is the tower structure pack. Now this one is not a one click. This is a multi click. So the first thing you do is you click on the one click button. So it expands the first summon armor stand command. Now when we paste this into this command block, it's going to summon an armor stand. Now there are three things that could happen here depending on which version of the one click it is. There's either going to be a glass block like this with the armor stand, in which case you can reuse this command block. It may turn this command block into stone, in which case you can place any command block you like anywhere you like, which is what we're going to do here just for demonstrative purposes, or it will land directly on this command block. So there will be no glass block, the armor stand will appear on the command block. In general it's safest, the only exception is this glass block method it's safest to just use a new command block. So everything is now executed off this armor stand. So we're going to go back to the website. We're going to select the first one click, copy it and paste it in here. And um, we can now power this. So you'll see everything's being executed off that armor stand. So that's the first part done. If we go into game mode three, um, you can see that some stuff has appeared down there, but it's not finished. So we need to go back to the website and get the second command, like so. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to delete all of the things in there, paste the new command, and repower this. So there we go. We've got the success message there. That module has now been installed. You can see it down underground, fully installed. And now the important thing is, you want to break this armor stand. You want to um, make sure this armor stand is destroyed because otherwise the next multi one click that you create is going to summon its own armor stand and the install is going to get confused and it's going to uh, install the next one at this armor stand as well. So once you're done, break that armor stand before installing anything new. Um, so we're now going to go and install the final custom terrain module, which is the... Um, the custom structures module. Now you can see there's a nice one block gap here between the two modules. So finally we're going to line ourselves up and we're going to go going to go into game mode one just to just to make sure. So we're in line with those last ones and we're in line here with this one. So that should leave a one block gap. Game mode three, go up to the surface. You can use the scroll wheel to speed up or slow down your uh, your flying speed. And I'm just going to set block a command block here. Save me pillaring it up. And then we can paste the next command in here. So we're going to go over to the game mode for website again. We're going to get the custom terrain base module. We're going to click on the one click thing to expand uh, the summon. We're going to paste it in here, power this, and we'll get our armor stand. And then we can actually use this command block over here again to install over there. So we're going to go back to the site. We're going to get the first of the three one clicks. We're going to delete everything in here, paste that in, power it. See it's installing over there. Excellent. Uh, we can go back to the site, grab the next of the three commands, paste it in here, power it again. Make sure to delete the old command each time. And then finally, we're going to get the third one click command, paste it in here, power it, and we're done. So there's a congratulations, the custom train base module has been successfully installed. So we should see uh, terrain changes happening around us now. Uh, we may see some towers. We're not really in an area where we'll notice many biome changes. Oh, in fact, I think there's a tower getting ready to spawn over there. You can see it slowly appearing uh, as it as it works it all out. <laughs> we'll give it a moment. I forgot to install the structure population module, I think. So those armor stands are not going to vanish. You need the structure population module um, in order to fill the chests and add the spawners. So it didn't quite generate properly. But um, the installation for that is the same as I've already shown you. And then just to tidy up, you want to um, break this, get rid of all these command blocks, go down into your redstone room, and you can just double check that everything's looking okay. Uh, there's plenty more room in here to add more modules, and all the clocks seem to be running. 
So that's excellent. Um, one more thing that you might want to consider doing after you've labeled these with signs is uh, setting up the teleport. So uh, I would go over here and to be honest, you can stick this on an existing hopper clock. So you can set up your own little hopper clock like this. I'm just going to plonk this down here. I'm going to do TP at E uh, M equals zero. So anyone in game mode zero within a radius of um, let's say 200 blocks. Um, actually, that's not at E. Let's do at a. There, there are much nicer ways to do this. You probably want to set people's spawn points in a box and teleport them out of the box. But in general, this is the theory. You can do the TP in here, and then you can say that you want to send them to, what was it, about 150, um, 200, I think it was about there. So this is going to teleport anyone who dies in game mode 0 without a bed, because this is now the original spawn point back to that area that we're at. So if I go into game mode 0... I'm going to die now, aren't I? It's it's now teleported us over to uh, the original spawn point that we saw at the start of the video, uh, more or less, uh, because I don't think I remembered the exact coordinates. But uh, if you get the coordinates of the original spawn before you do this, then you can... Um, you can sort that out. <laughs> so that's basically it. Uh, you are welcome to ask questions in the video description uh, in, in the comments below if you need to. Uh, we can see some of the custom terrain stuff taking effect here, uh, which is pretty awesome. It's a little slow because I'm recording right now. Um, and don't forget there is a wiki. So if you're having if you're having real trouble, um, go look at the wiki and go. Um, there's a forum as well where you can post troubleshooting issues. Uh, so thank you very much for watching, uh, hopefully this helped people, and I'll see you next time.